So, now that I've taken the key card to uh, room 803, uh, I can uh, access this floor from um, from the menu in the elevator. Cancel. Now, I have a couple of uh, minutes, I think, before um, our second target will enter one of the elevators, so I'll just uh, take my time to uh, get another key card to access all of the doors in, on the 8th floor. Although I don't really need it, but, um, well, hey, why not? Hope you oh no, shut up. Now, that briefcase is really important because um, it's, if you remember from the um, intro screen, it's an optional um, assignment, but uh, I'm going to take it, nevertheless. I like to do uh, uh, secondary quests and uh, side quests and stuff like that, so, yeah. Now, this time I'm going to take the second elevator and, ooh, fireworks. I'm going to take the second elevator because, um, yeah, yeah, just relax. I know for a fact that uh, the second target will uh, enter this elevator. Uh, I'm just going to leave the briefcase here because, well, I'm not going to need it in the following uh, moments and minutes. And while we wait for our target, I'm just going to uh, share some trivia with you. So, back in late 2003, before even Hitman Contracts uh, was uh, released, there was a teaser poster or a, a concept screenshot or something like that, which featured uh, Agent 47 in Las Vegas. Now, obviously, um, Hitman Contracts didn't take place in Las Vegas. It didn't even have one single mission in Las Vegas. So uh, from that you can uh, you can see that um, IO Interactive were uh, already thinking about Hitman uh, Blood Money even before Contracts was released. And if you've played Hitman Contracts, you will definitely realize that because Hitman Contracts and Hitman Blood Money are really, really tied together. Um, in the storyline. Uh, and here's uh, the Sheikh. He's arriving and he's heavily guarded all of the time. He has uh, guards um, around him and uh, inside the lobby where he will be staying and uh, it's just almost impossible to uh, get to him. But thankfully I know a way. Now Let's see if I need something from this guy. I'm just gonna take his key card and uh, nothing else for now. Hello, Mr. Police Officer. And I'm going to the eighth floor. And uh, although I've taken the key card from uh, from uh, that employee on the eighth floor. I'm not really going to use it, and I'll show you why. But first of all, um, I'm just going to wait for the Sheikh, who's right there, to uh, enter the casino and uh, the lobby afterwards. No, the lounge, sorry. So this is where he'll be staying, and um, once he gets there, you can use a little trick to um, get him away from his bodyguards. And uh, after that, it's just up to you how you want to kill him. And um, you can you can use the briefcase, uh, the briefcase that I've just um, picked up from our first target. You can use it to place a, a bomb in there, and uh, uh, if uh, the briefcase will be delivered to the shake, then you can use it to. Uh, um, activate the bomb and uh, kill 
more targets in just one uh, hit. Now, everybody's running away, but thanks to the way the game is programmed, uh, there are a few seconds uh, before uh, the door closes, after one of the civilians or even Agent 47 uh, walked through it, so I just used that to my advantage and um, I didn't need the keycard from the employee to get inside. No, let's see. Let's see no. Okay, he's there. Now, I just called him and I have to move very fast. This is another uh, part where timing is really, really important. Oh, how convenient. And uh, everybody was there panicking and uh, because of the fire alarm. Um, yeah, so since the fire alarm was so close to the Sheikh's uh, room, it was possible to uh, just get inside there before the door closes. But um, anyway, I, I also had the keycard, so it wouldn't have been a problem if the door would have closed. Now, since I'm dressed as a, as one of the employees, I, you, I can enter this area. And this is a nice lounge. It's pretty cool, Thanks. some girls dancing. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. The suspicion meter was uh, on red because. Um... Hi there, Shake. Because one of the employees uh, almost uh, noticed that I'm uh, an imposter. And uh, <laughs> I'm just going to give you um, a few tips here. Whenever the suspicion meter goes to red, possibly the worst thing you can do is to run away because, um, as I did, because then you'll just attract more uh, suspicion to yourself, so. And um, I'm taking this kind of a back route to the lounge because I could have gone through there, but um, there are a lot of, a, a lot of cameras there and um, it's uh, really hard to uh, get past there without getting spotted on the camera, I mean. Now, um, I'm just going to uh, get the briefcase, get my suit, and get out of here. So, come on. And I left it on the seventh floor. Now, since I got past... Uh, that uh, checkpoint where they checked for weapons, I can now get the silenced weapon because it's nice to have in, the, in my collection. Okay, that guy's coming over, and uh, I don't want to get spotted, so I'll just, um, yeah, see. He almost uh, sees the body, but it's just barely out of his uh, line of sight. Alright. <laughs> almost forgot the briefcase there. And beautiful view, beautiful, beautiful view. And that's it. That's the mission. Um, you can do this a number of ways. Uh, you can, for example, disguise yourself as uh, one of the one of the targets and uh, go and meet the sheikh that way. Um, you can also put a bomb in uh, one of the briefcases, as I've mentioned a little bit earlier, and uh, you can just also <laughs> go guns blazing. So he just said, uh, I'm the kind of man who gets what he wants. <laughs> now, um, let's see. Here's the exit. 
and hopefully I'll get a silent assassin rank. Hopefully. Yep. Oh, that's just great. Excellent. And I also got the bonus for the um, for getting the briefcase. So you can pause the video and read the uh, the uh, article. And uh, <laughs> there's a link to hitmanforum.com, which is a fan site for Hitman. And uh, this is also a pretty funny article. Lion mutilates 42 midgets in Cambodian ring fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 